So you think you know Aladdin? Well, if you've only seen the Disney version, there's some pretty big changes you're about to find out. Disney's Aladdin is only inspired by the Arabian Nights tale, so of course they get some artistic license to change things up, such as by adding in the animal companions, of course. Some things in the original don't really fit with Disney's vibe, but they definitely made some interesting changes. Number 1 the genie is easily the most memorable character in Aladdin, but did you know the Arabian Nights tale has two genies? Now, I know Jafar turns into a genie in the film, but that's his own dumb wish, so it doesn't really count. Arabian Nights got two genies, so we were supposed to get two fully fledged genies, really. The genie of the lamp we know and love is actually the second to appear, with the first being a genie of the ring. Not unlike this one. Which, by the way, is a ring Jafar gave him. Yes, Jafar does in fact give Aladdin a ring with a genie in it to get a lamp with a genie in it. I can't make sense of it either since the genies seem to be on the same power level, but maybe he just didn't check the ring, but he did know it was magical, so your guess is as good as mine. You can't help but think what this other genie could turn out like. Would they compete for Al's attention? Would they be as enthusiastic as each other? The genie is a pretty dominating presence, so it's hard to imagine another sharing the screen, but the whole ring deal is pretty interesting. Number 2 A big part of the story in the film is about whether Aladdin will use his last wish to free Genie. In the original, this was never even considered, as Aladdin had not one, not three, but infinite wishes? Yeah. For years, Aladdin just uses his wishes for food every day before he starts dreaming big. Eventually, he uses the Genie to gain a promise of marriage for the princess, but is nearly thwarted by another suitor. So how does he respond? More wishes take care of that. By using it to kidnap the princess and force the suitor to spend several nights in the cold. It's a rather scary tactic, but it works. I think I can see why Disney didn't include this part. It's pretty scary. The limited wishes does drive the film to a natural conclusion rather than the several years the Arabian Nights version take, so that's a good thing. Speaking of which... Number 3 there's another time skip in the Arabian Nights tale, and it's a big one. After marrying Jasmine, which in case you've forgotten, doesn't actually happen in the first Aladdin movie, Aladdin takes several years to become captain of the Sultan's armies and win several battles. This only takes up a single sentence in the original tale, but it's probably one of the biggest changes. We see Aladdin holding his own in combat, but leading an army is an entirely different thing. I also wonder how many of those victories were actually wishes. And it's only after these several years that Jafar comes back for revenge. I'd have liked to seen a battle-hardened Aladdin face Jafar, but the film couldn't really handle a time skip, so it's a reasonable cut. Number 4 So, here's a random detail I have no idea why Disney changed. They made Aladdin an orphan. Of course there's nothing wrong with being an orphan, but it doesn't really add anything to the plot for him to be an orphan. In Arabian Nights, his mother actually gets reasonably involved and is basically a main character, but there's no mother to get involved in the film. If Disney didn't want this character, I could see them just not including her, but the film specifically mentions that he is an orphan. I can't really see why they would deprive Aladdin of a mother, but there we are. Maybe it's because, in Arabian Nights, Aladdin's idle behaviour literally kills his father. Like, literally, he dies because of it. Ouch! Number 5 In Aladdin, Iago is actually pretty important by stealing the lamp for Jafar, but without a faithful companion in Arabian Nights, Jafar does the dirty work for himself. Which it turns out isn't so dirty, as the princess gives Jafar the lamp in exchange for one without a genie inside. Somehow, Jasmine doesn't find out about the genie in the original tale, so is oblivious to its, let me remind you, infinite wishing power. She simply sees it as an opportunity to trade an old dusty lamp for a new one, and even princesses know how to spot a good deal. I guess it adds another mole to a story about things being too good to be true, or to treasure old things, or something. And that about wraps it up. There's lots of other little things, like Aladdin's journey to Africa, or that there's no magical carpet. If you found this video the least bit interesting, I'd recommend reading the Arabian Nights version in full. That's it for this time, but if you think I've missed something important, let me know. Thanks for watching.